Right? But huh. again, you have to be thinking about this shit while you're playing, right? You can't just rely on instinct. You can't just, after you die, now it becomes all fucking sporadic. And even if all of you die at mid, uh, and even if all of you die at mid, right? Again, what you have to realize is, since you've established pressure, you're not going to get sporadic spawning, uh, sporadic spawning, because if they kill you, you're just going to spawn right back on your side, right? So it, it becomes consistent because you're the one with, in a sense, half map control. So if they kill you, they're killing you from their side of the map, most likely. Uh, so, anyways, any questions? Uh, no, no. Oh, yeah. How do I get back into the thing? You just, you just have to rejoin. So, you just gotta load up the Skype and rejoin. If not, you should see something now. Anyways, any questions? Go ahead. Um. um this uh, is, um, gold, gold is. is like, like, I, get, I get what you're saying with this Hello? 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 Gold is gold very, is dangerous. very dangerous. Like, like it, it's, it's just a really, a really awkward, awkward spot, spot to be. And. and like it's because the nade bounces, the nades. Do you want to do a half map setup? Like, almost better to overload one side. side. Like, maybe like, like, maybe like one, one, or one or two one top enders somewhere, somewhere to where it's overloaded because, because gold is just gold really, is bad. really especially bad. Especially if, like, say OS, OS, like the overshot to drop. Gold is so awful to try to get to. You got that big bridge, like, it's just not, it's not an ideal setup spot, if that makes sense. Well, it's, it's okay to have one guy there. If you necessarily overload it with, like, two people, then, yeah, you can maybe get into some tricky situations. The thing about gold side, though, is that uh, it's the most open, so to speak, because now you don't have this big thing on purple side blocking you, right? Because, obviously, you can now look all the way through that, and you can back up far enough on gold to where you can actually get a great line of sight and angle right into the back of blue or opposite on red. Uh, so, again, it's good because there's a lot of maneuverability that gold provides, whereas purple side is a little more constricted because you have to be a little more, I guess, timed with your jumping and obviously where you're kind of moving around the map. You have to be a little more aware of your footing. That's probably the best way to put it. Uh, where gold is a little more open and a little more unforgiving, uh, or I guess forgiving is probably the best way to put it. Uh, so uh, it's okay to be, and you just have to understand how to operate your area. And you have to realize that you need to be able to adapt depending on how many people are pushing you from what side. Uh, and you always need to be looking for an advantage. And by doing that, you need to always be looking for 2v1s, right? Or 3v2s, yeah, yeah. or 4v3s, yeah, or 4v2s, yeah. or 3v1s, right? You always at least want to have a man or two up on them. And again, the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you can see them. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you can see them and then call them out. Uh, so again, that's why kind of doing like a 1-2-1 one, one split off the bat, or doing like a 2-1-1 one, one, or a 1-1-2... One, one, uh, makes it just a little easier uh, because then you're covering a larger area and you're watching multiple choke points and then depending on where they push, you adapt to that, right? You don't have to play standard and just be like, okay, we're going to set up one guy here, one guy here, one guy there, one guy there, they're just going to fucking sit here all day long. No, you want to constantly be putting pressure uh, by, again, creating the advantage. If they push one here or one guy out to the wide, that should fucking be money. That's all day right there. Because now you have this guy shooting him, this guy shooting him, maybe that guy shooting him. If not, you at least have two people, right? So you potentially at least have one nade going in with two people shooting that guy, pushing out to the side. If he pushes left, then that's fine, uh, right? Then, then pretty much, like, again, right, what you have to realize is you're here. If they push a guy here, right, then your line can become like this, right? If they push a guy here or over here, right, then your line uh, becomes like that, right? Because what you're doing is you're accounting for the one guy that's pushing by himself with the assumption that maybe right two or th one or two other people might be pushing from the opposite side. Uh, and again, all you're doing by, by kind of withdrawing a little bit is just buying yourself time. And you're buying time for the 2v1 to occur, get the kill, and then now it's become a 4v3. Right? So it's all about creating the advantages and just realizing what you need to do. And again, you don't necessarily have to play the withdrawal if you want. You can still maintain your same ground uh, just as long as you finish off the kill before your opponents get into a position where they can start shooting you, right? Because again, you're trying to create that 4v3 situation, right? Where you at least always have a man up on them. Yeah. Uh, so again, that just comes down from choke points. That comes down from, you know, timing out nades, not necessarily wasting your nades. I know a lot of players like to sporadically just fucking like nade toss that shit the moment they spawn. Attentively, please try and use nades intelligently by either throwing them at choke points or after a call out is made and you're actually in a 2v1 uh, or you're about to be in a 2v1 and you actually see the play person you know you don't just randomly throw that shit hoping that it's going to kill someone because someone called it out even though what you have to assume is after you've made the call out that person is probably two or three seconds ahead of you by the time you throw the nade and it lands and explodes obviously a lot of shit to take in yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. any other questions 
No. Seeing the, seeing the lines, man, really helped. That, but no, I don't have any questions. <laughs> I got you. Uh, again, uh, you know, it's, it's not that you're slowing down your pace of play. Uh, if anything, all I'm doing is just coordinating what you guys are doing and just organizing it a lot more for you yeah, so that yeah. it becomes easier to understand so that you have a clearer picture of what you need to be doing when you're in the game. Uh, let's let's watch a little more. So Syntax in this situation, uh, he gets the kill, though, again, he maybe could have possibly died, uh, but good job winning that. Again, it was a 1v1, which you have to realize. Uh, in that situation, you got a little bit of an assist there, so that was pretty cool. It was a late 2v1, though. Uh, should have been an earlier double team, which, again, you could have died easily. Uh, and then again, this guy flanking you. So you guys had a guy flank you, and again, no one was. Uh, it looked like no one was in a position to see that guy. It seems maybe Mike saw him, uh, depending if he was low and or, or him or Ryan was actually looking over there. But again, even if he did, the call was late, late reaction. Uh, and then again, if the call out wasn't late, that's just because you guys weren't watching a choke point. I mean, you have to understand, you guys have like two people over here on yellow and then two people at purple. Again, you guys are completely spread out. You have no one at the middle of the map, and you're limited on based off the angles you could watch because you have one guy second level. You got Mike, who looks like he's maybe below the mid circle on first floor, like in between yellow and mid, it looks like. Uh, or I guess if you guys just call that green. Uh, so, uh, again, depending on obviously where he is, right, line of sight's kind of limited, but let's just, you know, for sake of argument, it's always good to check. Uh, so in this situation, uh, Ryan obviously can't really help you out because he's too busy trying to blow up this pipeline, I guess. I mean, you want some water or something? I'm just, I guess I'm kind of lost there. What happened? Um, <laughs> no, I mean, no, Ryan's trying to get some agua, so he's, he's thirsty. Right now, he's... Who did he just kill? I don't know. No one. Oh, he killed oh, Nisei. Nise. I don't know where he killed him. But... but. Ryan comes over here. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like a little bit of a double team there. Again, Crab dies because no one was watching the choke point over here. Only if someone was watching that, or of course bottom, because he could have also came bottom and yeah, then went that he way. Died he died from the guy purple. I died from the guy purple. No, no, no. He died from the guy that flanked him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know, but the guy from purple. No, no, no. Kill just, Killa just got the pickup kill. The other guy put in the majority. Oh, okay. Of the oh, okay. Yeah. And he's still over there, too. He's on the left side of, of TJ or opposite side of him uh, over there in purple. So, uh, uh, but again, right? Yeah. You guys had no idea there was a guy middle. Right until he ended up cleaning crab up, and then of course, right, Ryan gets into position to actually see him. And again, you guys could have already seen if someone was coming mid if you guys were just watching the choke points. So again, just kind of realizing where the positioning is, and it looks like again from what I've seen, a lot of you guys are really favoring the one v ones. When I've really, been, I've only seen like one, maybe two two v ones so far out of the fourteen kills you guys have got. And again, we're not even two minutes in. Let's play. Uh, guys at mid. Looks like you may have got some assists there. Uh, that was good. That was uh, uh, pretty decently timed, I would say. Uh, but then, Ryan, you come all the way over, and I just want to point this out. Like, I really enjoyed how you just wanted to flash your dick to everyone because, you know, that's kind of like... Really, I, mean, you have to have, I mean, like, you have to, like, look at your position. You're in the middle of these two green pillars. Like, you're just standing out there like a target dummy. You can get shot from anywhere here. You can get shot from anywhere here. You're standing out far enough to where maybe they could actually get, get you shot from over here or even over here, too, as well on first level. Uh, again, I just, I'm just i confused. Did you want people to see your shining armor? Did you just get done polishing that shit or something? I guess I, I was just... I'm confused. <laughs> um, but again, you narrowly escaped with your life. And again, that guy ended up shooting you from first level, which he wouldn't have been able, wouldn't have been able to do if you just backed up. Or even off the side. Uh, you pick up the OS, you camp. Uh -huh, funny. Uh, and now you have a guy on purple. Again, it looks like it's lucky. I don't know if someone called that out for you because you were the only one looking at that guy and you got lucky because obviously you saw him uh, when you probably should have seen him at more of a choke point uh, instead of more on your side of the map where your teammate was. So it looks like, based off that, that he wasn't called out. Uh, let's see where your positioning is right now in relation to everyone else. Uh, so TJ's bottom, obviously most likely they're probably spawning over here blue side uh, still, since you have TJ over there on red. Uh, so Crab looks like you're over on yellow, Mike's here. Now in this situation, Mike should be filling in mid to green, right, because you got Ryan over here on purple, you got Crab there, and you can even have TJ if you want to kick that, you know, fucker second story uh, on your red, right, because 
Again, even yeah. from that yeah. position, yeah. you can still watch a lot of shit. Like, uh, watch. Let me. See, I, I, I bet TJ I bet just spawned because spawn. bottom bases yeah, are, yeah. Are, huge, like are, are. Yeah, they're a huge yeah, spawn they're point. Huge. So. Uh, but even, but even, even before you play it, play it, play it with our position. Where would you recommend me pushing there? And then I just want to see how wrong I go. Uh, okay, yeah, so in this situation where you're at, you could either go second story red, which is going to give you vision here on this choke point or that choke point. Additionally, it's also going to allow you to watch bottom green. Additionally, it actually also allows you to watch across their top if they're going to jump from mid green, so you can support that, or you can just make call outs and let them know if they're going left towards yellow or purple. Obviously, it gives you a lot of variety that you can apply there. Or what you can do is you want to go second story green. You can do that too as well. You could even fill in and kind of float over here if you'd like, kind of bottom in between, because this is also going to give you vision here, it gives you vision there, and it gives you vision there. Uh, so that's something you can do too. That's the second option. Most likely, though, again, I'm always going to be a big fan of going top green just because height advantage is always a big, awesome fucking thing uh, to have because you can play around yes. a lot more with height advantage. So in this situation... You probably should go left side, top green, and then your other guy should fill in right side green. Though you can also put one guy floating green, and then you have the other guy's second story on red. That way you can always guarantee the fourth spawn to always be opposite side blue, or if you're blue, opposite side red. Uh, because then you're doing like a one, I guess you're doing like a one three. <laughs> I guess like a one three back, if I felt like using a soccer term. Uh, so yeah. In this situation though, I would have either liked to see you either go left side, top green, uh, or top red. Uh, Around okay. the front area, so I guess we'll see what happens. Wow. I don't even. I don't oh, even never mind. Well, you end up grabbing. But you floated bottom mid. I think I need something to retarget as fuck. Right here. Oh, don't. Oh god. I don't know. I know. <laughs> I mean, you got the kill. I mean, that's cool and everything. But again, oh, it's no, 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 yeah. no, I die. No, I die. Yeah, but again, <laughs> but again, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it turns it turns into a pawn for pawn trade. And at the end of the day, you always want to come out ahead if you can, not break even. Though breaking even should always be a last resort. So. Again, in that situation, what you then have to realize is now let's look at everyone else's position. Right? So, Ryan did the. Ryan. Uh, so, again, Mike should have actually filled in mid because, Ryan, you were actually behind Mike. Uh, and again, what you have to realize is what's the shortest distance I, draw, I can I run draw, to fill in? I draw, like, draw, like, three people, people to look, look at over there. there. It doesn't like, matter. A couple yeah. people walked out into the open, open and didn't and give us a visual. I know I'm not trying to make up for it. I know when I did it was dumb. I mean, it's. I mean, it's. It was dumb. <laughs> but no, I, I get what you're saying, TJ. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know what I did. I know what I did. It was... I, my thought was, my I, thought could was I could him blank him, and, and then he saw me, and, me and, and I kind of was like, oh. Shit. I probably just spawned. <laughs> Fuck. I think I need to get a new controller. Anyways, whatever. Sorry for the fucking analog shifting that's going on. Um, so anyways, just, just again, and even in this situation, which you have to realize too as well, right, Crab really isn't even in, in a position to help out because you had like two other guys that are still around blue. This motherfucker can't see anything. I like how you have the purple visor too as well. You look like that guy from fucking Star Trek. What a fag. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> point is, again, right, yeah. Ryan's top green. He can see some shit. Mike's supporting, but Crab can't see shit. Again, most likely because you probably just spawned and you're running over there. But, again, the realization just needs to be that, right, you don't necessarily want to overpressure as well uh, from where Ryan positions is from Mike's position because if one of you guys dies, now Crab, by the time Crab even gets to yellow, right, it could just turn into, you know, now you only have two people mid all over again. Uh, so also be aware of where your teammates are and the shortest distance for them to fill into because, again, that's always going to be very important, especially if you lose one or if you kill someone from a certain position, then you can kind of fill in or push up, whatever it may be. Just always be conscious of where your teammates are at all times because when you spawn really dictates where you need to fill in. And you always want to try and fill into the shortest position by having people that are already ahead of you fill into the next position so you can either take over theirs or fill into a shorter position. It just saves time all around. Does everybody understand that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, basically, you basically, put yourself, you put yourself in, in the in most opportunistic spot to help your team. Your team. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, like, for example, in this situation, like, let's say you had a guy over already here yellow. Then what would happen is Ryan would fill in right side green, and you would jump up here and fill in left side green, right? Because it's the shortest position from where you're at uh, to fill into. Uh, uh Outside of that, I mean, that's probably it for me. I mean, I know we've been in here for almost 45 minutes now. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, of course, now would be the time to ask. I mean, we're only, you know, whatever, fucking 
a little over two and a half minutes in, but there's really no need for me to even continue. Again, it just it just looks unorganized. It could be a lot more coordinated. Yeah. Can, you, um, can, you, um, yeah. can you go to the last, last, like, last maybe four, four three minutes of the game, game when it got really got close, really close and and just to see if we reacted, reacted well to it? We ended up winning 55 but... I just want to see if we slowed it down and it started playing better than we did in the beginning because it was super fast in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Oh, you just got to hold it right. No, yeah, you just, yeah, that's the only way you can do it. Fuck my god. Nah. Um. Because it seems like we have like, it's like every like map every we map play, we play, no matter what no matter it is, what it's like in the beginning, the beginning, it's like, it's like we all we go all through, but everything's just happening so fast, and then like midway to the end, like, like, we all slow it down, and that's when we start working on it. Well, it, se it seems like we have two ways, like we either just destroy at the beginning and then blow a huge lead, or we have a like we're just down or struggling the whole game and at the end we just kind of get our shit together and pull away uh why, why that is i don't know but we i don't know we do it a lot though yeah yeah that's what i'm talking about like we had and that's oh. all, like, I feel like when we get close to the win, like, we all start to just shut down and then try to get try to get killed, killed like, that, like that, like, way too hard, like, try way too hard to get them. So right now, you only have two more kills to go. Alright, so yeah, we can play it from here, if you want. Uh, like, I would go back to, like, back to like, we had, like, five, had, like five, or five or so to go. Or like, or so. I wouldn't even say that. I'd say, like, 47. But, but yeah. It'll go, it'll go pretty quick. quick. Oh, I think I think 48 was a long like like rest. Uh, yeah. So even here at 45, okay. So let's see where positioning is then. Just got over shield. Uh, of course, uh, time so that shit. That up, huge. That won, huge. The, game, won the game basically. basically. <laughs> Uh, so you have two people down. Only person left is Mike. Uh, now, first off, right, you should have already been aware of where his positioning was. And then the second condition is you should have had two teammates down. And most likely they're going to be spawning based off of where your positioning is or how close you guys are to a spawn area. Because, again, right, spawn points usually work if you guys ever played fucking, like, you know, uh, co-op in campaign. And one of you died. I'm sure some of you guys might remember when you're in battle, that little fucking sign came up and said, oh, you need to move away until your teammate can spawn. You have to go uh, yeah. and shit. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's actually pretty similar, uh, if not almost exactly how the spawn system works. So, again... I know, thank you. I try. Only on Tuesdays. That's my I've never, style. I've never, I've never related, related that, with that with matchmaking. Yeah. Yeah. Happy. yeah. <laughs> I got you. That's what happens after I eat my honey, bunch of, honey bunches of oats with a banana. That's my style. Uh, okay, so... In this situation, though, uh, after you grabbed OS, you should have been aware of where Mike was, and then you should have either fell straight to yellow, or you should have went over here uh, to blue, and you shouldn't have been lingering around mid, uh, because, again, you're in a 1v1. Sure, you might win it with the OS, but, again, you're in a very open position, right? Because you have no support, you have no cover, you have no control over mid, so it's very easy for someone to easily come in and, and double-team you or even triple-team you too as well the longer you linger around, right? Because, obviously, you're being called out already. Uh, so yeah, yeah. let's let's play. We'll see what happens. Uh, you go the opposite. Okay. Yeah, I, I get aggressive with it like an idiot. So I mean, again, you you get the kill, but again, right? Lucky that there was no one else purple. Right? Could have even back smacked you because you turned your back to them. You had no idea where anyone else is. You only focused on one person. Right? This is what I would call a lucky kill. Um, you that spawn, spawn, spawn Look, I just spawned down, spawn down there. And Mike was, and on, Mike blue. was on blue. It shouldn't, like, have, it happened. shouldn't have happened. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's the spawns, spawns in this game, are, in this really game are really weird. Well, you have two people down, and you don't know where the other two people are on blue team, and you spawned... Let me see. We're in. We're in. Let me just go to you. Oh, I guess I can't go to you until you spawn. Should be, should be. Oh no, you're still alive. Okay, here we go. So, wait, you spawned here? Hang on. I, I spawned wait, 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 you die? Yeah. Wait. Let me see. Let me go back. Okay. Okay, so you die. Now, let's see what happens when you spawn. Okay. So you have four people up. 
A guy just jumped off a red too. Off off of red. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, just he the 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 map. Map. Yeah, yeah, see. So you have a guy that Okay. Just jumped off a red. And then you have a guy on purple, which is on blue side. Then you have a guy on purple blue side. Then you have a guy on purple blue side. So Yeah. Uh, again, so, oh, yeah, so, 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 what you have to understand: the likelihood of you spawning red is more likely because you have more of your opponents that are on the blue side of half map, that are on the red side of half map. So it's not random; it's logical that you would potentially spawn there, or you have a higher chance of spawning there based off of where your opponents are. Now, if your opponents were on more of the red side of half map, I could venture to guess that you'd most likely be spawning somewhere near either red, yellow, or red, si or blue, yellow, or blue side. Um, so again, right. Okay. It's not super, like you understand it though now, right? After I showed you where the yeah, positioning was, yeah, and the routine, it makes it more sense. Now. Like, oh shit, now I get why the fuck I spawned yeah. there. It's all becoming clear. Dots are connecting, and now I can fucking ET phone home and shit. If you guys ever saw ET, great movie. Uh, um, of so again, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not it's not the most sporadic thing. It obviously again does make more sense. Uh, and based on, of course, after we look at where the blue player's positioning is. Uh, it is, of course, more logical why you did end up spawning uh, there, uh, of course, because then what you also have to understand is you had more teammates that were on the red side uh, than yeah, your blue yeah. teammates were. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay, let's well, I guess we can play a little bit more. Oh, hang on. I'm like, fucking on the blue team. My bad. Uh, okay, so, okay, so, yeah, so you spawn right now. Your positioning is obviously, obviously you get a good positioning now. Uh... And again, Crab is down bottom yeah. low. Ryan, you just spawned over blue, or maybe you guys just work, maybe you and Mike just kind of worked your way over. They were alive. They were alive. Uh, so well, again, yeah, it, yeah, I, I spawned red. red. I spawned red. I spawned red. red. I spawned red. I remember the second Dead person down blue was Mike. With Mike. And then, and then, okay. So that was Ryan. And then yeah. Crab's yeah. just I was, like, yeah, I probably, yeah, I probably and shit over yep. the purple. Yep. Got it. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, even in this situation, though, right? Like, okay, so let's. Let's let's play this out. See what happens. Uh, so you play that guy again, realizing that you did kind of take a shot or two of unnecessary fire because you're standing in the middle of the red door or window. Uh, you challenge that guy and you trade pawn for pawn. I don't know why you did that. That made no sense to me. Uh, you could have easily waited for a teammate to come over and support you, or you just could have put shots on him uh, and possibly won the one v one ranged uh, again. Of course, waiting for the two v one would have been more optimal because he was in a very limited position since you already had two teammates flanking from the opposite side. So just to point that out in my rapist voice because I like to put overemphasis on shit. Okay. Uh, now you're coming over here blue. Uh, you didn't even check yellow, so you have no idea if they're there. Uh, now you check yellow. Thank your God. Uh, and you saw him, but again, what happened if you didn't check it? You see him. Call out should have been made if there was someone top green. Uh, Mike, you overextended yourself because you were on their 40-yard line of red. Uh, again, listen, I understand that you're, you're, you're always looking to chase Punani, but you just have to understand that, you know, pussy's pussy, but you don't want to be stickler, you know, in American Wedding or American Pie 3, you know, <laughs> raping the old granny in the closet. That's just not good shit. Uh, so, again, though, right, you overextend yourself, you died. Ryan and Crab, you guys are kind of, uh, I don't know, holding hands, a little too close there. If you guys want to be butt buddies, please get a fucking room. You're just a little, again, too close. Uh, and then Syntax, you're by yourself. No one's top green. Uh, again, right, so in this situation now you lose line of sight, you're not watching the choke point, so you have no idea if someone's coming over from yellow, even though you may have just saw the bottom of their leg, and he went bottom, of course, late vision. So again, uh, it was okay. I mean, as an okay, I would just say piss poor. Again, it's very organized even towards the, the last ending of it. I mean, if anything, yeah. you guys, you, if anything, you should have used your lead. Uh, you should have taken more advantage of your lead. And just and, and just waited for them to overextend, and then just, and just attack and just pounce on the two v ones or the three v twos or the three v ones. I mean, you guys should have been creating those uh, moments for you, for you all day long, um, especially yeah, since you have the lead. Yeah, I, right? They have to come to you. Based off of what you said and everything, I do think that, that, that I have I have I have said it a couple times, and, and everyone's actually, everyone's said, actually it. said it. We need to we like, need to, like communicate, communicate, you know, like. like, like where we're, where, where we're at, where we're, we're pushing, pushing a lot more that, that way. way. When, when we are spawning, we, we, 
you know, we're aware of where our teammates are, teammates are other than just looking at kill cams. Like, like, you can be looking at, you like, like, your kill cam and your teammate, and they can do this by the time you respawn and respawn and get yeah, so like, well, first off, what you guys have to do is, I mean, just get more familiarized with choke points. Like, realizing that, okay, yeah. this yeah. is a choke point, right? The middle here is a choke point, and this is a choke point. That's the same on blue side and on red side, right? You just have to understand that's where it is. Then you have a choke point here, and then bottom, mid, and then over here that they can go to. So, again, right, and then you have down here and here. Same thing with uh, here and then down here. This shit's never going to fucking change. Choke points are static. Right? They're not dynamic. They don't change. They're limited. Right? Once you understand where choke points are, it's very easy to time out routes. It's very easy to predict where people are going to be because they have to go through these points on the map. Uh, and then you can always, you know, you'll always know where you need to be looking as well. Uh, so, again, if anything, I would just say get more comfortable with memorizing and learning where the choke points are on the map so that way you guys don't lose line of sight on shit where you need to be looking at stuff. Switch your position after you get a kill. Don't telegraph yourself. Outside of that, I would also strongly recommend on working on your initial strategy on, or your initial start on where you guys are going to kind of move and where you're going to go. And then the next phase of that is just now slowly starting to work your adaptions in to where you call out when you see a solo runner, you focus on that guy while trying to you know, not obviously die from your opponents that are pushing. Uh, but then again, if the solo runner pushes to an area but he doesn't show himself, then switch your target because it's only one guy, right? If there's two people pushing to the other side, then force a 3v2 on that guy, right? Because your solo yeah, runner is probably yeah, paused and he's waiting. It's just you always have to adapt, and you got to adapt yeah. instantly. Right, but yeah, again, it, it doesn't mean that. Yeah. yeah, and again, it doesn't mean that you have to adapt in an unorganized fashion. It doesn't mean you just have to adapt, you know, quickly or whatever. And you know, you have to adapt so fast so you don't have time to set up or organize or anything. And that's just the way that fucking Halo has to be played. No, you can do it in a very organized fashion. It's just shit you have to practice. You have to run those scenarios over and over again so you're used to them. You know, you know what to expect and then you know how to handle it. And that comes from time. You know, you guys can. You know, you guys could have felt like this was, like, fucking one of the best sessions you've ever had so far out of anyone that ever helps you out. But at the end of the day, if you don't actually start memorizing and remembering and consistently practicing these things and turning them into habits, you're not going to be able to apply them in the game. So, For sure, for sure. Yeah. Anyways, any questions, though, before we do end it out? Uh, honestly, I'm shocked. Like, I, a lot of that stuff I haven't thought, thought about. But, no, I don't have any questions. Gotcha. Just more so like, like more so like price range. Map control. Like, like I'm talking about like, talking about like actually, actually like, like you know, you know, continuing on. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Damn, that was loud. My bad, guys. But yeah. Uh, I got yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, again, I can give you those guys those prices after we uh, finish the session. That way, I can just turn off my recording shit and I can end the call and then we can recall um, if you want, and then I can give you. The details there i just want to be able to end my recording first but okay. before we do end yeah. it though yeah, uh, again i just want to note that ryan's connection is what i like to refer to as wireless dial-up doo-doo i think it's pretty amazing that he's able to lag out of the call so often uh, again if uh, well you know well, parents are downloading porn then that's another statement you know i do uh, see there's I, like yeah. what happened was yeah. His, <laughs> yeah he has good internet his dog chewed up his laptop for so he's using some yeah. shitty old gear oh that's what it was yeah, also, he should be running wired. I don't know why he's running wireless. It doesn't make any sense to me. Always. always <laughs> no, he does on his next box. I, mean, I, I mean, again, I mean, he, I mean, even yeah. if he gets like a 20 or 30 foot Ethernet, he should still run it to his laptop. It's just, it's so much better than wireless. Anyways, though, uh, uh, before we do end it, I always ask the team for the players that I'm doing a session with for feedback. So, uh, again, if you want to, you can. Uh, if you don't want to, it's all good. The only reason, of course, I do ask is because I like to be able to show people publicly that, you know, the teams that I did do sessions with, you know, didn't think that everything I fucking worked with them on for 45 minutes was completely fucking pointless and a waste of their goddamn life. So, uh, if you guys don't mind, I would love just to kind of hear. I know, TJ, you kind of mentioned something a little bit, but I, I would love to hear what you guys thought about the session now that it's done. Uh, and, again, you can be as truthful as you want. It doesn't really matter. Again, you know, I don't need to lie to anyone about anything. And it's going to be public. So if you hate it, please tell me. If you loved it, I'd love to know. Uh, honestly, I a lot of it I agree with and I like and I would have never thought of. Overall, I, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm really, really impressed. I'm super impressed with... Uh, with uh, with the, with the amount of detail, amount detail you go into and, and the time you actually take to describe things.